All right, welcome in. Garden Report, stole first it. one, first of 72. 72 and 0. One. They stole 72 one. 72 and 0. 72 and 0. And don't and act you like you guys didn't cringe when you saw that ball going towards the backboard like that. Don't, don't tell me you guys saw that going in, that Tatum shot. It was a terrible shot. Everything was – that was – it's hard to know how to feel about this game. This, what a roller coaster. I mean, you I know. I feel like this is going to be like the, the norm. Yeah. It, by the time you get to the second quarter, where the first quarter is like, oh, God, this doesn't – I don't know how long they're going to be able to do this. Then you get to the second quarter, and you're like, wow, nice little run. Third quarter – Boom! Drop the drop the hammer. Get to the get to the fourth your seventeen point lead, and then it was boom, 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 and just like that, it was just like we're back in the playoffs, right? <laughs> Same exact oh. vibe. It was like, oh no, they did it again. Fourth quarter lead blown. Everyone just saw the end of the game. If you're joining us for sure, um, again, Tatum hits a ridiculous shot. He probably shouldn't have hit. Um, probably lucky as hell. An absolute garbage awful non-foul uh called and Giannis gets two free throws and he absolutely yeah. ganks the second and the Celtics hang on to win 122 121 so again we're talking about it moments prior to jumping on live here we don't know what to think or feel you have to feel really good because after those two preseason games this was way better no matter how the game ended up than anything you saw but again Wow, down the stretch there, just absolutely blowing that lead. And then the PTSD of getting the same vibe that we had watching this team last year uh, and the lead going away and just the offense stagnating and just, you know, easy buckets, free throws on the other side. And it just felt it felt awful. And luckily they escaped. This yeah, felt, buddy. like you said, this felt like a bubble game a little bit with the Celtics, you know, showing up and then slowly we're like, here we go, the the daunting fourth order is upon us here. And sure enough, 13, 11, 9, 7, 5, 3. And like, oh boy, here we go. I'll be honest. I want to say this. I never would have thought that Jason Tatum's shot had a prayer of going in if Joe Sway didn't ruin it for me. Because for the people <laughs> for the people watching or listening, we're all, we all get on and start talking to each other with a couple minutes left. So we're on the same page. And Joe Sway has got himself, oh, I guess he's, he's ahead of the rest of the world. One of the best endings ever. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And not only did he ruin the best ending, he ruined it twice because then he said game <laughs> yeah. before Giannis missed a free throw. So all of these yeah, things happening, I'm watching it, like five seconds delay that Joe yeah. ruined for me. But he already so, knows yeah. what you're going to he already knows what you're going to say next, Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look at and that. Good and good. He's, he's gone. gone. You know and what? He knew Get that him was going to happen. And he knew that was going to happen. But listen, was it luck? Was it a lucky shot that, that Jason Tatum hit? Yeah, you could say that, but I want him taking the shot. And I, I, you know what? Shooters, shooters bounce, shooters roll, whatever you want to call it. You know, all star. Whoa, look at this. Okay, yeah, three, little three way here. I do that when there's Listen, three of us. A guy, a guy like Jason Tatum deserves to get a shot like that to fall here and there because that's just the type of player he is, the type of player he's going to be, and the type of player, honestly, the Celtics need him to be. They need him to take that shot and make that shot once in a while. Can't you can't depend on it. But when it goes in, it, it 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 when it goes in, you absolutely take it. And that foul, I don't want to ramble too much here, but that foul that they called on Thompson, absolute garbage. The NBA needs to take that, needs to deal with that immediately because you're throwing yeah. a prayer up at the rim. You're throwing a prayer up at the rim. Two big guys are going up for it. That's all that is. Like there's no like egregious foul. There's no foul there. You know how they're gonna deal with it? They're gonna call it again in another game. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm sure. I'm that's sure. Giannis. I mean, that was that was terrible, though, guys. That's a terrible call there. It was brutal. So Thompson's right arm's on him a little bit, but nothing that I call but it. Come on, that's my two basketball is, players playing. The know? ball, the ball's tipped by the left hand, and whatever's going on with the right hand, he already had tipped it with the left hand there. And you got to make a team with 0.4 seconds do a little bit more than that to give them the chance to win at the line. But I said it to you guys right at the moment. We're talking about a 64% three-point shooter in crunch time in the playoffs last year. It's his biggest weakness as a player. you got to be able to close the game at the line, and he's still unable to do that. That is a humongous free throw to miss in that spot. And honestly, any other superstar in the league, save for maybe LeBron James with his free throw concerns, makes that. I don't want to get too sentimental here, but this this is a game that Tommy Heinsohn was absolutely watching and cheering on from start to finish. I can't help but think they had a little something to do with, with Jason Tatum's shot going in. I can't help but think that he went a little berserk 
wherever he is right now. What is playing in the background? He went a little berserk right now. <laughs> John's uh, playing some berserk Christmas with, tunes. With that foul that was called, and I think he had something to do with Giannis maybe missing that free throw. Uh, so, you know, I saw the, the Tommy patch tonight in the jerseys that, you know, I'm sure will be hopefully – uh, getting, you know, a lot of tributes, reminders about Tommy for the rest of the year. But it's a game that he can uh, be happy about. So Jason Tatum, you guys hit on him. How about Jalen Brown tonight? Phenomenal showing. Oh, the way he was rattling down the twos was Kobe-esque. And there was a time where people used to joke about Jordan Brown. It's just an, <laughs> like in weird Celtics Twitter, not in any serious lane. But I, that's the kind of game he had tonight, just rattling down two after two after two off the dribble. And it was fitting because we had a guy here on CLNS Media, Jeff Goodman, say before the season that this guy can't create, he can't be a number two option. Well, guess what? Tonight he was a steady number one option for this team. And the dribble's tighter. He can create for himself clearly here. The playmaking is getting just a little bit better. You still see the shades of dishing to guys, running the pick and roll a little bit. He looks ready to take another leap. We'll see with Tatum. You know, Tonight was the kind of game that we saw last year from Tatum. I don't think there was a level above what we saw last year from him. But Brown, I have all the hope in the world for him this year. He just seems to get better every step of the way. And I said this to you guys last year. There's nights where he's the best player on the team. And that was pretty definitive tonight if you take this game start to finish. He was giving you those Chris Paul-esque uh, pacing, run-breaking twos in that fourth quarter. Yeah, Josue, why don't you say something? Welcome hey, back. You guys got so mad hey, that man. you kicked me off the show. Did I hurt your feelings? Did I yeah. Your feelings, no, no, Joe? I didn't mean to ruin the, the we game. Mad. Ruin, Jimmy. You we were kick me mad. off the show. Yeah. You had to kick me off the show. But no, I was listening to Bobby. To, to Bobby's point, yeah, that's what Jalen Brown looked like in some parts of this game. But I think he's a that's that's a number two role right there for sure. Like that's what the number two does, right, guys? Like when the when the number one can't get it going or, or he's chucking up threes, the number two is going to keep you in the game. He's going to be consistent. That's, well, I they said it in the game here. Josue, I am interested because you're right. That would be that would make sense for a number two. And in fact, Middleton was carrying the Bucks when Giannis was a little bit quiet. Exactly, you which would one actually sort of play in, in Tatum's favor. Yeah, but it, it, what's interesting, they did mention in the broadcast, can they work not just Batman and Robin? Can they work as 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 two number ones interchangeably? You know, um, as opposed to. You know, I think they can, but I don't like when Tatum does that that kick out. You know, he kicks his leg out and just goes for the three. Yeah, there's times when you have to do that, and he's good enough to do it, and he's talented enough to knock down that shot. But I, I just thought he looked a little. He, he relied on it a little bit too much. I thought throughout the game tonight. There's a reason why he didn't get to the free throw line. You know, and you know, that's that the thing with Tatum is that has to change. There was one play in particular with less than two minutes to go, a very crucial part of the game. Where he took one of those threes, he missed it. Jalen came back on the other end, didn't think twice, went straight to the rack. That's the sort of attitude Tatum has to have. And until he gets that respect, or until he starts to to, to uh, approach the game, his offense, his his, his scoring that way, he's not going to get to the free throw line. The referees aren't going to just start giving him fouls. He has to earn it. He has to take some tough some tough uh, hits and accept it, and not look at the referee and put his hands up and ask for a foul. That's the best way you start to earn your your keep in, in the NBA, or at least. You, you earn uh, that level of respect where you get, you're constantly going to the free throw line night after night. I like it when he's a little bit more sudden, you know, like I think there's just times sometimes where Tatum is just kind of, you know, I, to me, he's hit his best when he's twitchy and decisive, you know, as opposed to that, wait for it, wait for it, setting right. the guy up for the step back. That's it's great when he's in the zone and he can go off at times. And when he does, it's unbelievable to watch, but when that's all he's doing and he has nights like this where the shot is off, that's just what you're going to get. You like to see him kind of feeling, reading the defense, getting a little twitchy, finding that moment where he's got a step, take it to the basket a little bit more strong. He didn't, he wasn't doing that consistently tonight. He didn't in the two preseason games. He wasn't, he wasn't doing it either. We mentioned it looked like he was having a tough time turning the corner on people. Maybe he's getting used to two inches and 10 extra pounds still. Uh, and it's still <laughs> super it's still Maybe. early, but he's still the same guy. I mean, he's doing what he's doing. It's just sometimes you're going to have nights like this where, you know, he just, it wasn't, he never got into a rhythm. Okay.